that going? All right. Yeah. All right, guys. So welcome uh, to 2024. Year 12 maths methods. Um, so today we'll have the first part of the lesson will be a bit of an introduction to the course. So I've sent you guys this email up here and I'm going to scroll through it and just talk about a few formalities uh, and then we're just going to get straight into it. Um, ch chapter one, chapter one is sort of background concepts covering a bit of what you did in the holiday homework and adding a few more in as well. So um, holiday homework, uh, good, happy with what I've collected there. I'll come have a chat, see how you guys went with it. Um, and if there's any questions you had in particular about it coming up. We've got our textbooks. Um, does everyone have their textbook with them? So bring that to every lesson. You will pretty well complete, almost, there are a few exceptions, but almost every question in the textbook. It's a pretty good textbook. Um, apart from chapter four, the order's a little bit wrong, but it's a, it's a, it's a pretty good book and will complete most of the questions. Um, I'll talk about the work solutions uh, to it in a moment, but if you don't have your textbook, you can access an electronic copy on the OneDrive, okay? So no excuses for not doing the homework or to put up the textbook, you always got it, you can access it online. Um, on YouTube, I'll film all the lessons and I'll put them up on YouTube, so if you're away, um, those will be uploaded to Sector, that's where you can see them and catch up on them. Um, if we have a look at the course structure, so this is our plan for the year. We have six tests all up, um, worth a total of 50% of your grade, so each test is 8.3% recurring, 8.3% of your grade. So we have the first two tests that we will do this semester specifically on calculus. Okay, so we have the rules of calculus will be our first test and then we have applications of calculus will be our second test. Following that we do a little bit of statistics, that's what the street random variables is. Integration, so rules of integration and then applications of integration, that's backwards calculus. And then we have continuous random variables which is another statistics unit. So we basically have Two tests for calculus, two for backwards calculus, and two for statistics. Um, the folio task, okay, so you only have one folio task that you do for the whole year. That's worth 20% of your grade, and we start that towards the end of term two. That's on integration techniques. Uh, and the exam is 30% of your grade. That's everything we cover will be assessed in the exam. Before we do start calculus, there's still a bit of chapter one, background knowledge that we will cover, make sure we're all up to date and all happy. Um, we won't need to rush, you can see we do finish pretty early in term three, and that leaves you with about two months, a month and a half of exam revision. It's heaps of time, but it's a good amount of time you know, to set yourself up. So we don't want to rush, but we don't want to just dawdle either. Um, we just got to make sure we're doing the work. So that's the core structure. Okay, so I've sent the OneDrive link to you guys. Hopefully you've been able to bookmark it. I'm not gonna attach any files to sector because then it's like, oh, which lessons it attached to, which assessment task is it attached to? So I'll just open that link up and show you it. Um, where's my Google page? Here. So anyway, if you open that link, it should go to here somewhere. That's, this is my spec folder. Can I go back one, 2024? No, that's not where I put my methods. I'm going to open it in another tab. 12 methods, here it goes. Okay, so make sure you bookmark this. I've said I'm not, I'm not going to attach anything to sector because I, there's heaps of stuff I'm going to give you guys. So bookmark this, have it saved. If you need anything electronic, whether it be the textbook, uh, tests, work solutions, whatever it is, you'll find it here. The notebooks that I've printed for you today, it's all uploaded here for you to access. Um, you'll find lots of stuff there. So there's the holiday homework, miscellaneous extra resources to prompt us, notes, whenever there's something, that's where I'll refer, I'll refer you to. 
So that's the OneDrive. Now the thing I need to say about the OneDrive, I said we've got the textbook, but we've also got worked solutions for the textbook. So I said you probably do every question in the textbook. Um, one, like you can use these, all right, you can use these, but I have sort of three, three rules or three caveats for using the work solutions to the textbook. The first is we won't really need to use them in class, like ask me, ask your peers, okay? So they don't come out in class unless I say so. Um, the second thing is they are used as a guide. So if you have worked solutions to a question, I don't want it to be look at it, copy, paste, copy, paste. You're not just copying what's written there because you're not learning anything. The idea is that it's there to prompt you, to give, it's a guide for you. All right, it's not something that you just copy because we don't learn anything that way. Uh, and then I would say the third thing is if you do look at them, you need to come back and attempt that question later without work solutions. I think that's where we get, where we really get the learning. Um, so there's work solutions and you'll find the textbook there uh, in that folder. Lots of stuff there. So if we, for instance, we go into the tests folder, we've got lots of practice tests. So our first unit, our first test is differential calculus. And you'll see we've got seven tests there all the way back to 2017. 2017 is actually when SACE updated the course. So it transitioned from what was called maths studies and it's now called maths methods. And they removed a few things, they added a few things in. Um, and so we've got tests going back to 2017 and work solutions in there. So that when it comes to revision, you've got stacks of stuff to have a look at and make sure you're fully prepared. Um, so that'll be a good guide there. All right, back to our email. All right, we, I've sent a letter out, okay? That's just for your information, I'll open that quickly. So I've sent this email this to your parents and carers. Um, it's just saying welcome, it's just saying what our plan is for the year um, and how we're assessing tasks. At year 12 level, all tasks are assessed from an A plus through to an E minus. So at year 11, it's just A, B, C, D, E. Uh, at year 12, we have those finer gradations which makes my job a lot harder because I have to think about it a fair bit more about where you're sitting regarding the performance standards. Um, but yeah, A plus through to E minus, and then just expectations there about behaviour and so forth. And you guys are year 12, so you know all that, but it's written down there um, as a formality. Okay, sector. I'm on sector. I've got the schedule for the whole year. So uh, I've been teaching this course a while, so I've just copied it from um, previously. So here's our role. I'll go to the program. I'll click on, um, yeah, here we are. So here we are, we have background, uh, background knowledge. That's what we're starting with today. Now today I would anticipate doing a bit more than just exercise 1A, but like I said, we're not in a huge rush. Um, and so you'll find there, here's the questions we're gonna do. You'll notice those are also stated on the notes booklet. So it's copied straight from there. They're the questions that we need to complete for exercise 1A. And that's listed as your homework. You can see we've got year 12 for three. And then it just goes through, it should be set out for the term when our tests are. Okay, test for term one. Um, that's like, like with all things, the, you know, there's a bit of flexibility. Interruptions will occur. Sometimes we'll move faster through something. Sometimes we'll move slower through something. So it's a plan. It is subject to change, but it is all there. So have a look. Um, and sectors, if you're away, that's where I'll upload the videos to. These are last year's, but I'll upload um, these this year's videos to as well. And uh, study centre, I'm there Thursday nights. Just make sure you let me know if you're going to be there. So I'll make sure I'm there um, as well. Happy to catch up with you at any point. So I reckon that's all the formalities. Um, does anyone have any questions about the course itself as such before we get straight in? Very good, so what we'll start with then is we, these booklets, I will print these, you'll have four booklets all up. So you'll have one for the introductory notes, you'll have one for calculus, one for statistics, and one for integration. So intro, calc, stats, integration, four booklets. And you need to bring this to every lesson. This is your notes booklet, and this is what I'm going to go through with you. Um, when, when I'm teaching up here, we'll go through these examples together. So if you open up the first page, it says exercise 1A, exponential functions. This is the example question we'll do together. And then you guys will answer the textbook questions of 1A, okay? So we'll fill this in together. 
Um, we'll go through, we'll recap, we'll um, answer these questions, and then have a go at the exercise. So we're bringing this to every class. There's an electronic copy of it, if you prefer, if you've got a tablet or something that you want to work from. Um, that's on the OneDrive as well. Uh, but otherwise, this is going to be start of every lesson. Open this up. This is where we're going. Um, excellent. All right, any questions? Very good. Let's begin then with exercise 1A. We're talking about exponential functions. Now, I'm... I, in all of these booklets, it's everything um, that you need to know. And obviously some things are more important than others. So where things are important, I will stress them and I will highlight them and I will um, really emphasize this is really important. And where not, it's just stuff that's part of the course. In the SACE subject outline, this is what's described to us. So this is what you can be examined on, all right? So when I say that, I'm really thinking about that end of year exam, thinking about making sure we've ticked all of the boxes. Nonetheless, leading up to a test, you'll be very clear about what's expected, what I can ask, um, and so forth in the test. So let's get straight into it. We've got these exponential functions. Exponential functions take the form a times b to the x takes c plus d. So we've got quite a few variables there, but we're familiar with a, b, c, and d affect the shape of it. But the basic exponential function might be something like two to the power of x. It's exponential because the variable, x is our variable, it's the power, right? That's the power, it's the exponent. So this is an exponential function, all right? Two to the power of x. And if you graph something like this, it shoots up and we have exponential growth, right? It shoots up and we have an asymptote going in this direction. So that's an exponential function where we have exponential growth and we can have exponential decay. Um, there's just a few dot points there. We're gonna look at those as they pop up in the question. And then A and B are going to affect the shape. So you can alter these and I've dictated there how the shape is affected. That stuff is not very important at all. Okay. When it comes to graphing exponentials, you can just use your calculator. So you're not required to know how the shape changes and so forth, but it's written there for you. Okay, question one. Consider the function y equals 3 times 2 to the x take 1, take away 5. Part A says, identify the values of a, b, c, and d. So I'm comparing them with right at the top, I've got exponential functions take the form a times b to the x take c plus d. So we've got to say what corresponds with a, what corresponds with b, what corresponds with c, and what corresponds with d. So hopefully we can see a and 3 match up, b and 2, c and 1, D and negative 5. Okay, A and identify the values of A, B and describe the translations. So how is it affecting the shape? Alright, so A and B will just say these affect the shape. Okay, they affect the steepness, they affect the dilation, they're just affecting the shape. And according to the table above, we could, we could go from there what kind of shape it's going to have. So if we see A is 3 and B is 2, both of them are positive, right? Both of them are larger than uh, 0. So it's going to take on the first, it's going to have this kind of shape here. Okay? It's going to have that kind of growth. Alright, regarding C, C is 1. And if we have a look at our dot points, C is the horizontal translation. So we have X take 1. Now if it's X take 1, it moves one unit right. If it's X plus 1, it moves one unit left. So X take 1 will move it one unit right, X plus 1, one unit left. So X take C is always the horizontal translation moves at C units. D is the vertical translation. So you can see what we're doing here is we're performing this function, we're solving it, and then take away five. So whatever the function is, we graph it, and then take five. We take five from every value, shifts it 
down five units. Okay, so that's what the minus five does at the end. So what I mean by that is if you graph this, and then you graph this, this one's going to be five units long. It's the same shape but shoved five units down. Okay, part B, state the domain and range. Okay, so for the domain, we can just look at the second to last dot point. For all exponential functions, x can be any value. X, E, R. What that means is the variable x belongs to the set of all real numbers. X can be any number from minus infinity all the way to positive infinity. Any number. X, E, R. That's the case for the domain for an exponential function. Now, for the range, we have two possibilities. We have either x is larger than d or x is less than d. x is larger than d or x is less than d. So, one way we can test it is just to graph it and see. But we know it's going to have this shape. And we know there's an asymptote at d is minus 5. Okay, there's an asymptote at d is minus 5. Um, we can see that from the fourth dot point. d is the vertical translation, and y equals d is the horizontal asymptote. It's going up, it's going to exist above d is minus 5. So for the range, we will say y is greater than minus 5. Now, next we're on to graphing it. So, definitely, we'll use our calculator here. Pull your calculator out. And the graph can actually help us to answer these questions about it, can't it? So, I'll go to Desmos. I'll use Desmos a fair bit for graphing. Um, and my assumption is we're reasonably competent with graphing on our calculator. But where I need to show you precise skills, I will pull up the... I've got the old emulator. I might even look to try and get a new one. So let's see. We've got three times two to the power of x take one that's, that's annoying. That's very annoying. Is that right? And then take five. Okay, so there's what our graph looks like. So, I'll uh, draw a Cartesian plane here. Here's my x-axis, here's my y-axis. And we have an asymptote, that's y is minus 5. And it exists above that. I'm just going to do a rough sketch for now. And we can include some information like the y-intercept, minus 3.5, and the x-intercept, 1.74. And you can get them just from g-solving them, right? G-solve y-intercept, g-solve root, and then we have a nice sketch of the graph, and then we just need one more thing, which is to give it a title. This is the function 3 times 2 to the x take 1 to the 5. Okay, so have a look at what we answered about it. We said it's going to have this shape. A and B are going to affect how much it dilates and how fast it grows and so forth. We said the 1 shifts it across and the minus 5 shifts it down. Okay, so you've got base 2 functions going across, 1 down 5. Here's what it looks like. Um, that asymptote at minus 5, and we can see that, we can even answer the domain and range question. You can use your calculator to support you. You'll have your calculator in every test except the first one, where there will be no graphing, you won't need it. Um, so that's, that's it for that one. All right, what about next part? Say so graph it, done. Okay, determine the value of the function to three significant figures when x is three. So we're saying when x is three, what is the value of y? All right, so we've got two strategies to do this. If we've graphed it, okay, if you've graphed it on your calculator, you should just press trace and type in the number 
three. Press F1, trace, and type in the number three. And it's going to take you to that point on the graph. So when X is three, that's going to be about here, I suppose. So it's going to be somewhere up here on the graph. We're going to have a positive Y value. The other way you can do it is we want to know what's the value of this when X is three. All I would do is put the number three right here where the X is. Okay? I want to know what is Y when X is three. And then I can just type that into my calculator. Three times two to the, we'll have two take, it will be three take one, which is two. Three times two squared, so three times four, 12. Take five, seven. Is that what we got? That's good. Uh, so when X is three, determine the value of the function to three significant units when X is three. When X is three, Y is seven. So that part of B. C, A, B, C, D. Good. Find the X intercept using technology. We've done that already for our graph, haven't we? G solved the root. So the X intercept, when I G solved it, I got 1.737. Now that is four figures. I'm always going to write four and then round to three. Okay, so one, two, three, four, that's four figures. If we want three figures, we're just going to round the last one, 1.74. That's what I stated on the graph. So that's our x-intercept. Lastly, find the value of x. Raj, oh, interrupt me. I was going to ask, is we also have to write four figures and then three? No, no, I'll accept. Basically, I won't, you, you won't get marked wrong if you write more. But it's a good habit to get into, especially when it comes to things like statistics, where, where we're talking specifically about probabilities. So, no, yeah, no. You, you can go straight to there. Absolutely. Yeah. Good question. All right. Um, okay, what we have to find the x value when y is 2.3. So this time, what we've got is we want to know the x value here when the y value is 2.3. We're saying, what's the x value that makes that true? So this is a G sol. All right, we're going to. We've got y is 2.3. 2.3 might be here. We're saying, what's the corresponding x value? So, um, if you're in the calculator, you would go G sol and x count. I think you need to press the across arrow first as well. G sol, press the across arrow. And go x calc. X calc is calculate an x value. I want to know an x value when the y value is 2.3. That's the best way to do it. An alternative strategy, one that we'll come back to a fair bit as well, is to go into equation. All right, menu, equation, solver, and you can type this proposition in and solve for x, and it's going to tell you the value. All right, for me, or, or even again, a third strategy. I can graph the line y equals 2.3 and just say, where does it intersect? It intersects when x is 2.28. All right, so the x value, when y is 2.3, the x value, so for f, x is 2.283. Four figures, and we round to 2.28. Okay, really good. So that's exponential functions. Um, so hopefully, reasonably okay with it. Start just by using our calculator um, to, to graph, to answer the questions and so forth. But we're exercise 1A of the textbook, question one through to six. I'm gonna come around, see how you guys all felt about that. Um, but we'll just start off nice and okay.